Welcome back to Somster Games, the place to find new strategy games and welcome to my guide on combat mechanics in Strategy Command American Civil War. So let me first walk you through how this guide is going to work. At the beginning we're going to be looking at the predictions and how they can differ from the actual combat results. Then we're going to look at the main things that affect the combat mechanics, which is the attacker's attack value and the defender's defend value and readiness. Then we're going to go to over the exact formula that is used to calculate the combat, and we'll go through some examples to calculate the actual predictions that we get. And then we're going to go through entrenchment and other modifiers that can affect the result of the combat. Now this entire guide is going to be focused mostly on ground combat. A lot of the things are the same for naval combat. There might be some additional modifiers that we will not go to that are only applicable to naval combat. Now before any of you complain, yes, all of this information can be found in the manual. But if you don't want to go to 120 pages, you can just watch this video. So let's just wait. Before you finish off, we'll also talk about surprise attack. <laughs> Alright, and with that, we're gonna jump into the prediction. So if you click on your unit here and then you hover over an enemy, you can see the predictions of the result on the combat. Now the number on the left is related to my unit, the attacker unit, the union unit, so my attacker losses should be 1. And the number on the right is related to the defender's losses, which is 2. So if I attack, presumably I'll lose 1 strength and they'll lose 2 strengths. The actual combat losses can differ from the prediction by one per each. So I can get results like 0, 3, 1, 2, 2, 2, 1, 1, and etc. But I can't get 0, 0, for example. Okay? Now there are also some caveats here where some units have a chance to evade attacks and also some units can uh, sort of transfer the casualty loss into a morale loss. We'll talk about the morale thing later. All right, so now let's jump into the main things that affect combat mechanics or combat losses, and that's the defender's defend value and the attacker's attack values. All right, so first let's look at this unit, for example. So you click on the unit and you click here on the bottom on the magnifying glass, and this will give you information. You want to look here at the attack values and the defend values and your target type. So this is an infantry unit. And then we need to look at the enemy. So I'm going to right click away, click on the enemy and on the properties. This is also an infantry. So already the enemy is going to be defending because I'm attacking. So the value I care about is this infantry equals one in the defense value column. And then for me, for my attack value, I want to be looking at attack values infantry is two. Okay, so I have attack of two, they have a defense of one. If I was attacking with cavalry against their infantry, then what I want to be looking at my values infantry attack and what I want to be looking in their values here is their defense against cavalry. So always looking at the opposite type of a unit that you care about. Okay. Now, how exactly is this going to affect the combat? We'll talk about it when we talk about the exact combat losses formula. But first, let's talk about readiness. So when you click on a unit here, you can see its readiness. Right now it says 83%. So the readiness depends on supply, strength, HQ support, mo and morale. So let's just quickly, just quickly go over morale. So morale is changed every turn. And it's dependent on your previous morale, on the, your supply, and on your strength versus your maximum strength. We won't go over the exact formula, but just know that it can depend on the previous morale. It goes up and down. Essentially, if you took losses, your morale will most likely go down. And if you're out of supply, your morale will also go down. There's a minimum mor morale of 10%, so you always start with at least that. Now let's talk about the readiness and I want to show you the exact formula over here. So again, we're going to only focus on ground combat to so land units. So the readiness here is equal to unit strength plus HQ rating divided by 2 plus unit morale divided by 10 plus HQ experience divided by 2 and all of this is multiplied by 10. So this is for a unit that comes under an HQ. If unit is not under an HQ, then this is readiness equal to unit strength divided by 2 plus unit morale divided by 10, the whole thing divided by 2, and then all of this multiplied by 10. Okay, so you can see that the HQ rating and experience is very important, and then unit morale, which is dependent on the supply and strength we talked about, and then strength also features that as a se separately in this formula. So now that you know what is readiness, what is attack and defender values, how do we actually get the combat predictions? What are the actual combat losses? 
All right, so let's just jump into the exact formula. And then at the end of this sort of passage, I'm going to walk you through sort of like the tips that you want to take from the exact formula. All right, so the formula to attacker's losses equals defender's combat multiplier multiplied by defense type value plus defender experience divided by three, and that's subtracted by the attacker's multiplier times attacker's experience divided by three. What does this mean? Well, how much losses you're going to take is dependent on the defense type value of your enemy and on your attacker experience. So if you can get experienced unit, you will be able to take to suppress your losses to the attacker. So let me go to an example. We're going to go to here to this one one and we're actually going to calculate this together because I think it really helps in understanding how this works. So first we'll be looking at the things that are in the parentheses. So we're going to be looking at the defense type value. So how do I do it? Do I have to go to the properties magnifying glass again? You don't have to because if you look at the prediction, you can see on the bottom, this says EA equals 2 and ID equals 1.5. So the EA equals 2 is the infantry attack. This is for my attacker and the ID is infantry defense for my defender. So this will always just take the appropriate values from the table that we saw before from the, all of the attack and defense values. Okay. So we want to be looking at the 1.5. So that's the defender's uh, defend value. And then we add to it defender experience divided by three. So this unit has no experience. As you can see here, X equals zero. Uh, you can see it written. And normally you would see medals next to this unit. That would symbolize whether it has experience or not. If it doesn't have any medals, it doesn't have experience. But I prefer it written. So what you have to do to see it the way I do is go into options, advance, and unclick unit experience medals. All right. So their unit experience is zero. So they still got their defense value is just 1.5 and that's it. And then this is multiplied by the defender's combat multiplier. What is a combat multiplier? Combat multiplier is just readiness divided by 100. So essentially the readiness is 46. So you divided that, that by 100 to get 0 0.46, which is 46%. So you can just look at it as percentage. We uh, subtract from all of this, the attacker's multiplier multiplied by attacker experience. Because my attacker experience is zero, I subtract zero. So, so we have 1.5 multiplied by 0 0.46 which is 0 0.69 and that is rounded up to one so that's why our attacker losses is one so again what you want to take away from this is that this really depends on the defender's defense type value you can't do much about it and on your experience as soon as you get can get your experience to one then your attacker multiplier is going to be important until then it doesn't matter so you really 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 want to uh, focus on giving experience to your units now let's go over the defender's losses because that one actually has a lot more stuff in it. So how does this look? Defender losses is equal to attacker multiply, multiplied by open parentheses, attack type value plus attacker experience divided by three and parentheses and subtracted from that, all of this is in parentheses. Defender multiplier multiplied by a combination of defender experience divided by three plus defender entrenchment and plus defense bonuses. So. Let's first calculate the attack, the, the first parenthesis. So attack type value, that's two for me, plus attacker experience divided by three is zero. So this is still two multiplied by my readiness, 0 0.84. So two times 0 0.84 is 1.68. Then let's calculate the third. Let's start with third. So defender experience divided by three is zero. Defender entrenchment is, this is really important. Defender entrenchment is, um, one this is one over here so they get one plus zero the experience plus their defense bonus multiplied by the defender multiplied by the readiness which is 0 0.46 so they just get 0 0.46 so now we have 1.68 minus 0 0.46 which is 1.22 which is rounded up one i know i know just take a breather that was a lot of math i know but this is how we got the one to one. So again, what are the keywords? When you're talking about attacker, you attacker losses, you care about experience. The higher your experience, the less attacker losses you take. When you're looking at the defender losses, so how much damage you'll do, you care about your attack type value and their entrenchment. Okay. This is a great segue to jump into entrenchment because there's more I want to say about that. So entrenchment is really interesting. First of all, entrenchment obviously uh, 
can really help you sort of defend yourself. But also entrenchment has some other cool tricks. The first trick of entrenchment is that entrenchment allows you to change, to switch casualty loss into a morale loss. So you can af avoid taking a casualty, like losing a unit, and instead you'll just use morale. How exactly does that work? Each level of entrenchment is multiplied by 10, and this will determine the percentage chance that a unit will suppress strength or from combat. So for a unit over here, the entrenchment was one. So they have 10% chance to avoid the attack that would have been done to them, which in our case is also one, and switch it into a morale loss. And the morale loss is equal to 10% pair loss suppressed. Now, if I were to attack with this unit, I can do a damage of two to them. So they have 10% chance for each of these two attacks to be switched to Moralos and total if both of them were uh, switched to Moralos I could do 20% Moralos to them, okay? How do you lower entrenchment? You lower entrenchment by simply attacking and also if a unit has to retreat, so if it moves away from the unit where it's entrenched it will use its entrenchment and it can regain it back at the end of next turn if they're in a place to get it. And the exact value of entrenchment also somewhat depends on terrain. We talked about entrenchment, we talked about uh, things, but in, in the formula you notice in the defender losses there are some other defender bonuses, so what are those? What are some other modifier total that we can talk about? For example, if you are attacking over a river, so let me show you. So here, if you have a unit attacking over a river, so because we're attacking over a river, you can see it in the prediction as the symbol of the river here on, here on the bottom. And then this has the effect that it will lower by 20% your combat modifier. Essentially, you can, your combat modifier, instead of being 55% based on my readiness, it's going to get lower to 31%, okay? And then the prediction already takes all of that into account, but that's how you can see it. If you were to attack across a major river, not a minor river, then the effect would be 40%. All right, now let me show you something else, which I think is really, really fun. Now, look at this unit. This unit has... Um, Readiness 83% and its attack value, the EA is equal to 2. Then look at this unit and this is readiness 84% attack value is 2. So why, how come that if I attack with this unit, the result is 1-1, one, one, but here it's 1-2. Why is this unit better? Well, that's because of the action points. So this unit has 4 action points and this unit has only applicable 2 because it already moved. Now because this unit has not moved, it can do something called prepared attack, which is shown in the combat predictions by the two um, sort of like guns or rifles that you can see over there. And this gives you plus 40% for readiness. So when we're doing the calculations, the combat modifier isn't 83%, but 123%. So that's why we can get a much better, much more damage to the enemy. And this is prepared attack. Any land unit can do prepared attack if it has not moved yet this turn. Now, I actually think this is all that I want to wait to grow the talk. I'm sorry, I really wanted to do that. <laughs> so we're going to jump over here and I'm going to show you a surprise attack. And then we're going to talk about the stats of that. So now this is going to show you enemy contact and then the attack. The attack for this only happens if the odds are good for the hidden unit. So sometimes what can happen is that nothing happens. And that's because the odds were bad. For example, if the, so th this time it was 1-1, one, one, but for example, if the odds were like 3-1, uh, so the attacker would take 3 and the defender would take 1, then they wouldn't attack. So how does the, the surprise attack work? There's actually quite a lot of things that we need to talk about when it comes to surprise attack. Alright, so what are the stats for the surprise attack? The hidden unit has readiness increased by 15% for the combat calculation and the hidden unit combat losses will be 15% less. The movings, the, the one that's sort of revealed, unit's combat losses will be 15% more. So not only does this change the readiness of the, of the attacker, the hidden unit, it will also lower their losses and increase your own. Now, how can, okay, so now that we talked about surprise attacks, how can you avoid them? Well, the best way to avoid them is instead of doing the big move like I did, where I just kind of jump, moved over, you would want to move like one step at a time. And that way you would be able to view more of the, essentially the fog of war would disappear, you're able to view more of the enemy uh, territory, so to speak. But, and you can sort of move step by step. But what's important is that once you 
move once when you're moving the second time the view range is lowered by one hex so that you can just sort of like cheat this uh, essentially now what i just said mostly applied to cavalry uh, because cavalry has a higher spotting range because the infantry can only see the adjacent hexes you can really avoid a surprise attack with them all right i think that's it for this guide let me know if you learned something or if you have any additional tips that you want to give to other people playing this game and uh, you can click on the right to watch my first look but i should warn you that i made the first look before i read up all on the combat mechanics so i'm certainly not as knowledgeable as i'm in this video or i okay, you can click on the right because i played a lot of war games on this channel you can so you could watch me play things like v valor and victory panzer Corps 2 unity of command 2 and plenty of other war games so if you're interested just check out this channel and uh, you might find some stuff you like all right bye bye